Hello there people, this is Chris and I want to come back to my computer and Fusion for 60 and a cone shape. Fit text nicely, oh quite nicely, it's a bit too narrow in some places. Uh, text placed on a cone, uh, an outside of a cone or inside of a cone, I want to talk about it. And both uh, the boss and the boss with the same command. It's no use, no, it's no problem using a boss on a cone shape. The problem is getting the text correctly placed. If you just do a straight text and put it on a cone, it's gonna wrap uh, like flat. Think of it like you're embossing on the flat pattern of a cone, and that would be a arc shape, something like that. And if you put text straight on that, uh, it's gonna make a sad face in here and a happy face on the inside and look uh, very strange. Uh, emo boss, oh sorry. I, uh, yeah, that's the new command in Fusion. Uh, let's let's not talk about that. Let's let's hide that with the new design. Uh, I'm gonna just rapidly make something to emboss and deboss on uh, center line, uh, like uh, this. Let me do a line. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, Fusion. Something like this. Let's go out here up and make something pretty uh, like that yep and we're gonna revolve that around that line hit ok so we have a slightly different shape from the earlier one we did we can open up here and hide the sketch because this is not a fully defined sketch and I don't like that um, the aim of this is just like to showing also that you can use bit workflow on basically any type of cone how you ever create as long as it's a cone and not some other multi-curved shape uh, so we're gonna start with the tangent plane uh, and here's a small tip about tangent planes check your view cube uh, I want to put the text on the front there uh, might be some other designs here so if I now say tangent plane make sure the front is facing me and hit here you can see that the plane gets oriented if I slow it slightly rotate around it's longer from front but if I want it on the right side and I rotate it first before I select the face I the right towards me hit here and the tangent face will be aligned with the red face. So that's a good way to uh, place the tangent plane. Want it a certain side, I want it on the front like this. So it's gonna be nicer. Of course, you can also change the angle if you want to spin it around. It's up to you anyway, but good thing to know, tangent places get pl uh, gets positioned from uh, close face. I don't know how the con real connection is, but there's, there's some type of connection you can see. Uh, okay, we can create a sketch on a new beautiful plane. We will do some more projections. Uh, we can do this in single steps or multi steps. I will make it a single step on this side, but here's, here's quite simple because you see uh, the projections of these two circles, which are the top circle and the two circles here. They are going to be ellipses, of course, and they are quite different in shape, so it's easy to see. So I'm going to hit the, just to hit the face. Uh, one geometry selected, hit OK, hide the body. I'm going to make a line. I'm going to make a look at sketch, so I just look straight at it. I'm gonna make a line from here, make it horizontal, so I get the horizontal constraint and coincident between the line and the center point of ellipse. Make a second line in the small ellipse, like that coincident, like that, and now we're gonna make uh, the lines to find the vertex of the cone, or the, sh the sharpie point of the cone, which is gonna be somewhere up here, like that, make a coincident, line to uh, there and that line to uh, that point. If we turn on the body you can see we have made something. So this point here is where the vertex of this cone should be if we have a cut off the cone. So if you have a non cut off cone, a full cone, you know you basically can pick up the point of the cone, just do a tangent plane, pick up a point and you're done. Uh, look at sketch like that, hide body again and we make a window selection and turn this into construction geometry. Uh, I do that because it removes all these profiles, so get away with flashing. And uh, now we're gonna do no, no, no. Oh, I hate, I hate escape sometimes. It doesn't do what I want. Uh, I want to do an arc now. I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard and arc for center point arc, and this is gonna be my center point. And I'm gonna make an arc like that. On this arc, we're gonna put our text. Uh, the thing I want to do now, I want to have some controls. I like to put in a line construction line, uh, make it vertical, make it coincident to the region of this plane. So this is going to be the center of our text. I'm going to turn our body again. Here is going to be the center of my text. 
uh, and I make a coincident, select the coincident constraint, hold down shift and find the midpoint of arc. And you see that it did a cross and a triangle on the big small delta, I think it's and this line. And by doing that, if I hit escape, I can now move this up and down and I can move any of these size how I want. Uh, so step number one I'm going to do now, I'm going to decide how far from the outer edge of the cone face I want the text. So I'm going to dimension, uh, dimension, make sure to select this point and this point. Go out here and uh, let's do that 10 millimeters like that. And to get a fully defined sketch, we still have, as you see, the white dots are here. This is moving around. Just for simplicity, I will use a horizontal constraint. I select that point and the center point here. Uh, this makes sure that uh, I get a fully constrained sketch. How far of this arc you can use for text is uh, depends on some couple of things. Uh, so let's do text. Text on path. Make sure it's that. Select path. This one. And you have to check, uh, you can spin things around with this uh, flipping here, so you get the texture creation is sometimes it misunderstood, it doesn't misunderstand it, it just decides from which direction you want to look at the plane and text comes, it comes on backwards. And alignment, of course, align center, because I want the text in the center here. And we're going to do Fusion 360 text. Ooh, what? I'm not typing. Text on, on, cone, like that. Uh, that's a bit too small. Let's do that 20. Should we make it bold? Yes. Uh, there's a small problem with this. Uh, as you can see, these are getting really close together. I think I can change this to 0.1. Maybe put 1. I haven't tried too much of this. One that pushes it a bit aside a bit more. Let's make it two. You have this uh, how much spacing you want so it, uh, things are not overlapping. Uh, makes make it five. That's a bit too much. Or no, that look good. You can check some some letters can get a bit too close. It depends on the font you're using and some other stuff like that. So be careful about that. You're gonna see it. I'm gonna do it slightly different on the inside cone later. Uh, we're okay, we can finish sketch, we can turn on our body, we hit S on the keyboard again, keyboard again and use emboss. And we're going to do uh, emboss, yes please. And the sketch we're going to use is our text and the face is this face of a cone. And let Fusion think for a while. And let's have a look, I'm going to do, uh, now I'm going to deboss this one, I think that's prettier. I did that earlier, so let's do the same thing again, and minus two. And OK, and wait for Fusion to think for a while. Hide or sketch for a while, and have a look if it works. Yeah, we have some material in between the letters here. Uh, so it, it takes a bit of trial and error to get the text the style you want. Uh, the thing I can see, I want the text higher up. So I would do show dimensions and change this here to 15. Let Fusion update, uh, but that's better. That's more centered text. Fusion 360 text on cone. Yeah, that was the outside cone. Now we can do the same on the inside. I want the text up here. I can do a tangent plane. And I think, yeah, it's, it's oriented for the front. So it's the wrong way around. I want it 180 degrees around. So just type in 180 degrees. And we get our little uh, construction plane. Sketch on plane. Uh, the problem here is that uh, the two circles here are let's say, more shallow cones, so they are going to be really tight together. So I prefer to do one at a time here, P for project, uh, this, and then I do a line immediately where I can see the center, like uh, that. I make it coincident between the line and the center point. I hit P again for project, do the second circle, hit OK, do a line, you can see they are really close together. You can figure out which one is which, which, but it's sometimes easier to just do things nicely from the beginning. Hide body, and, and whoopsie doopsie, I forgot to make this construction geometry, so mark all of it. Hit line type, turn on to construction. We do a line, turn on construction again, like earlier, from outer point, somewhere in the middle, up to here. 
coincident between line and this point, uh, line and uh, this point. And by that, we have a little vertex or center point. S on the keyboard, type arc, center point arc from here. Uh, no more construction geometry. I'm just going to make a line like that. Uh, and line, yeah, oh, sorry, we do an arc like that. We're going to line once again construction. I want the center line to help me uh, make things control, constrain it to the uh, origin point of our sketch. We're not fully defined because we need to define this. In this case, I will put uh, the arc on the inside. This other way to do it. So the text is going to be on the outside. So it's a bit smaller risk that the text is going to overlap. I'm going to dimension a new, not that. I want a dimension from uh, this point. I don't have a point to touch here. So I'm going to right click and say uh, pick tangent because I'm not defining everything. Exactly. I haven't constrained it fully. So this is another way to do it. There's multiple ways how to input to the inputs. Three millimeters. And we're just simply going to make a horizontal constraint from this point to here. And from here to here. And by that I should have a fully defined sketch. Yes we have. Hit escape. And we're going to create some text. Text. Text on path. Here. Ooh, that's a big text. Let's turn around start with. Not bold. I want it to be 10 millimeters and uh, hello world. And for electronic nerds, it's called a blink. If you can't type out text, you blink an LED. Uh, fusion 360 dash 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I didn't know a new line. I want to finish the command. Something like that. Yep. Let's see how it works. Finish sketch. Turn on our body. Uh, S and emboss to find the command. The sketch profile here. And the face here. And wait for fusion. I want to do an emboss here. So the problem here is that we create an intersecting. So we need to go back in our sketch. That's the, that's the thing that can happen. Uh, we're going to edit our text, high body. I need to remove some letters, that's why I made so many numbers at the end. If I remove some of these, if the text is overlapping on the cone, you will get an error, like the one I get there, that the uh, emboss is overlapping. So, I remove some numbers, S and boss. You can change other things, uh, dimension of the, the, the text, or placing it and other stuff to make it work. So let's see if we can get it work now. Now it works. I want to do an, an emboss. I want to do it 0 0.5 millimeters. Like that. We're going to hide the sketch. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're thinking. Sorry. And uh, like that. Uh, a bit too close once again. I'm too nice with the dimensions. Show dimensions. Uh, that one. Let's make that 6 millimeters. Fusion is thinking. And uh, like that. We have place for hello world blink fusion fusion one two three four five. So you need to remember if you put in too much text and it goes overlapping, you will get an error. So this is this was or is my workflow to put text on uh, cone faces, outside face, inside face, and there might be parts of this workflow you don't understand. Have a look at some other videos where I explain more things. And if you like to add something, please leave a comment. And I might do one more version of this video, but it's better than this one. But with that said, take care as you're around and goodbye.